Hi, I'm Ms. Nickerson. No, Mr. Radford. Welcome to the Viking Science Academy. Today we're talking about bacteria. I love bacteria. Sort of. I don't know. It's good <laughs> and bad. It's all around us. So if you yeah. think you're going to get away from bacteria, you are wrong. Uh, tell me a little bit about their shapes. So we have three main shapes, and this is kind of how we can name them. And we have a, a wor worksheet in our packet that we're going to get. But we have bacilli, um, uh, cosi, and spirilia. So, and so that's how they're organized, yep. by, by their shape. Yep. Okay. Um, and I know that uh, we talked about heterotrophic and onotrophic. Mm -hmm. And bacteria are kind of both. Most yep. of them are heterotrophs. They have to get their food from other organisms, but a few of them can photosynthesize in yeah. autotrophs. Uh, they, I think they can reproduce really interestingly. What's binary fission about? They just kind of bloop, and there's another one there, really. They rip themselves yeah. in half, basically. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh my gosh, tear yeah. myself in half, and now there's two of me. Yeah. Oh, we're going to watch a movie in class on this, but the power of this is they can reproduce crazy fast. It's, it is crazy, and I mean, so. you know, there can be up to 100,000 bacteria in the in the space of your a pencil, like the period of a pencil. Wow. Like when you... So um, it's just, it's crazy yeah. how quickly they can do that. Yeah, too. that's why you can feel just fine and then an hour later just be yep. sick. Yeah. Just multiplying in your body. Yeah. All right, so we go back in time and we have the most ancient bacteria is called archaea bacteria, kind of the origins of living things. They're single celled, prokaryotic, um, and some of them still are around today and we see them in areas of extremes, yeah. including the extremophiles. Extremophiles, like hot. Yeah. Oops, I went the wrong way. There we go. So tell me about um, some extreme extremophiles. What makes them extreme? Just in the extreme environments that they live in. Um, you know, the previous clip was a seafloor vent. It's mm -hmm. it's there's no sunlight. It's but it is extremely hot. Crazy hot, from, yeah. From that, so uh, they do not need oxygen, which is kind of crazy. You can survive uh, in space. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So. so that's methanogens. That's one mm -hmm. of the types. We also have halophiles, which we see in like the Great Salt Lakes mm -hmm. and stuff that they kind of need salt for their survival. Yeah. And then the th our thermo as excuse me, thermoacetophiles, acetophiles. which I've seen personally mm -hmm. in uh, Yellowstone. They have wonderful uh, colors, the colors to just, them, yeah, yeah. but don't venture into that hot pool how alluring it looks because <laughs> you're going to die. It's yeah. really, really <laughs> hot water that yeah. they like to live in. Yeah. But then we also have um, kind of a little bit milder. We've got cyanobacteria. Yeah. And what, what can we tell so, about those? Uh, Blue-green algae, um, you know, uh, I talk a lot in uh, my bioinvestigations class about these uh, blooms that they can have, and they create dead zones in waters, and it's bad news. Kilfish. So, yeah. Uh, we have some of them in the Klamath Lake. Yes, we do. fly over. Yep. You can see these kind mm -hmm. of patches and rings Lots of, of lakes algae. in Oregon. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they can occur in the ocean also, yep. so um, it doesn't have to be blue. It can be different colors. Yeah. Now, there's bacteria all around us. We're going to watch a clip in class about how dirty your yeah. cell phone is. <laughs> but um, can you get rid of all bacteria? Not, no not really. Way. You can't. You can wash no. your hands. You can do things that are going to help, but you can't ri get rid of it all. So most bacteria we think of as bad. It's causing diseases. So here's a list of just a few of the diseases that are caused by bacteria. Very nasty stuff and some very common things. Yeah. You know, like diarrhea. Cavities. Yeah, yeah. Cavities. Yeah. yeah. So, so, and then some stuff I really don't want to get, like leprosy. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> so it, it, they're kind of all over the board. Yeah. Um, we also need to know that bacteria is one of the main uh, causes of STDs. Yeah. And now notice that we have the name of the bacteria. So there's our genus and species mm -hmm. name. And then we also have its common name. Mm -hmm. So you guys have probably heard of gonorrhea or chlamydia before, but what you may not have realized is that that came from a specific strain of bacteria. bacteria yeah. um, so how do we tell if it's a serious bacteria or like, a, eh, I think I can beat this. So we can stain them and if, uh, if they retain the purple stain, it's gram positive. And so that means it has that thick cell wall. So it absorbs the stain more. Okay, yes, I gotcha. Yeah. And then if it, if it turns pink, it is gram negative. Um, so it has a thinner cell wall. And so that can determine what doctors can do to kind of counteract so, it. So I'm assuming a thick cell wall, it'd be really hard to get in and kill the bacteria. Very much so. Where a yep. thin cell wall, we would have better chances of killing it off. Yep. So we use um, one of the things that we can also tell from their um, gram staining mm -hmm. is what kind of toxins they're going to release. Bacteria itself doesn't make you sick, but as it goes through its life process, yep. it gives off waste, just like you do. But its waste is usually some form of toxin. Mm -hmm. So it can be an exotoxin, which can be a, a serious uh, poison toxin that's going to cause some serious diseases. Mm -hmm. 
or it can be an endotoxin, which are just going to make you sick. They're gonna, the ones that are a little bit mm -hmm. lighter, and those are causing fevers and mm -hmm. that kind of stuff. Okay, I went the wrong way. There we go. But not all bacteria is bad. In That's fact, true. If we didn't have bacteria, we could not survive. Some um, of my favorite foods. Yes. Uh, use bacteria. Cheese yeah. and yeah. Uh, yogurts. Yogurts. Yep. Um, so we use them to help preserve food. Mm -hmm. um, you have a lot of bacteria that live inside your digestive tract that help yep. you process food. Without that, you couldn't process your food. Yep. And it's really important for them in the soil to help us grow plants. Yep. So. Um, uh, that's called nitrogen fixing. Yeah. If you've ever lifted up soil and you pick it out and it's just kind of got a lot of uh, white specks in it mm -hmm. and that's partly fungus but it's fungus and bacteria working together mm -hmm. and they um, transform nitrogen gas into a form that plants can use and it's yeah. really important for and plants. Plants need it, yes. Yeah, yeah, so if you kill off all the bacteria in your soil you can have a really hard time growing stuff in it and so that's kind of a management thing for yeah. farmers. Now there's some powerful traits of bacteria when called genetic recombination. Tell me a little bit about like what makes them a little bit scary. So, um, you know, basically the bacteria can connect and they can exchange DNA information back and forth. So if so, I know how to survive in really hot temperatures and you know how to survive bleach, we can kind of trade that DNA yep. and now I know how to do both and so do you. Yep. Yeah. So That's I, scary stuff when we're yeah. talking about diseases. And, yeah. yeah. I can also, as a bacteria, get DNA from my environment. So I mm -hmm. can get DNA from my host, mm -hmm. um, share it, um, or I can also switch it out kind of with a virus. And then the virus and the bacteria work together and the virus uses the bacteria to spread its disease. Yeah. Yeah. So it's kind of scary. Um, but we have some weapons against bacteria. What are antibiotics? Well, these are things that are supposed to kind of combat uh, the bacterial's life cycle. Um, and penicillin is, a, is our example. We'll learn more when we look at the uh, fungi. But um, basically, it's just trying to counterbalance that. And um, we did, we were doing really well until the 80s. And we thought, oh, we got, we got enough antibiotics. We don't need to keep making any more. And the bacteria, yeah, because they're sharing evolved. DNA, they're sharing information. They started to become resistant to yeah. that. Those used antibiotics. to be penicillin would cure anything. Yes, and now there are tons of bacteria that are it's called resilient mm -hmm. to penicillin and other antibiotics. And um, so we're seeing uh, diseases like gonorrhea, malaria, ear infections, staph yeah, that, infection that yep. Yep. antibiotics will not work on. Yep. So it's a combination yeah. of not making new ones and keeping mm -hmm. up with their evolution. It's also a combination of over prescribing yes. and taking antibiotics when you don't need it, yep. and then your body learns or the bacteria learns to not react to that anymore. yeah and you really I think it's on the next slide you yeah. really have to make sure you're following what your doctor says yeah first off we're hoping that your doctor is checking to make sure it's not a virus yes. antibiotics aren't gonna work on the virus exactly. it's not gonna work on the flu yeah that's, that's and so yeah. if you take antibiotics and it's a viral infection you're just basically training the bacteria in your body about that to be tougher <laughs> to be tougher yeah. um, it's counterintelligence um, so and then you, you always got to make sure if your doctor does give you antibiotics um, to to use the whole bottle they'll I'll just the prescription yes yeah. I'm not gonna save half and I'm feeling better I'll save half and I'll wait and maybe I'll get sick in another month and I'll have some pills no that's not good yeah. So, all right, we, we're going to take a look at some of the stuff that we grew during open house night, and we'll take a look at that. And I, I, I watch. We got some good stuff <laughs> back there. Cool. <laughs> oh, I'm hoping nobody gets sick when we look at it. <laughs> um, we'll watch a couple movies in class. And thanks for joining us for the Viking Science Academy.